I'm Tom Colbert, and you're watching the Break It Down Show. Yes, you are. We are once again breaking uh, Zodiac news. Tom, Tom basically is the main driving force. Him and his wife uh, put the crew together. That includes my former commander, Eric Kleinsmith, my fellow counterintelligence agent, Jen Buckholtz, and all of the different detectives and specials that you put together. You, you, I guess I could say, from my point of view, you are the head of the case breakers. <laughs> well, that's a nice compliment. And uh, we haven't stacked it, by the way, with just Army. No, I like to describe because, look, I, I describe myself as the ringmaster and these guys are all the lions and tigers. They have the talents, 1500 years of skill sets uh, in every field possible that you need in investigations. Uh, and uh, they, they we have a saying uh, whenever I get an email or a phone call, they're calling me to say, hey, Tom, I know a guy who knows a guy. And mm -hmm. that's how we're cracking these cases. Uh, there's no into, going into court, going to community meetings. It's let me look in that file up in my attic or on the stick and I'll get back to you. And that's yeah. what's happening. Uh, it's, it's, you know, what's happening online with uh, these crowdsourcing. This is cop sourcing. And yeah. that's why we're solving all the cases. This is one of the things that I don't think people often realize. We talked about this when we had Jen on previously talking about cold cases. You have a given amount of time for a police department to solve a crime. Now, in my hometown, which is where some of the Zodiac stuff happened, Benicia, uh, back then. OK, so OK, this is how crazy this whole world gets. Right. One of the guys that survived the sinking of the USS Indianapolis is a, was a cop from my hometown. Yeah, he later wow. on became a cop. Wow. He was badge number one. He wasn't the first cop in town, but they're like, okay, now we have to give up badges. So he was badge number one. And he often said, he's like, you know, depending on what part of town I was going to, I had to be really careful because there wasn't going to be anybody else there. Right. And yeah. so you take a, a police force that's this small, Benicia is a small yeah. town. Yeah. But you have this major murder happen. They just, you don't have the resources to, to solve these things. I mean, it, it's just it's shocking and so even a big city like san francisco well more murders more people you know and this stuff is really it's really we have to understand how hard it is and how many uh man hours it takes to to crack a case especially a 50 or 60 year old case like you guys are doing yeah and and it's a little different now because uh as my dad, the psychiatrist, used to say, there's a lot of moms and dads and very few parents anymore. <laughs> and that's caused the crime to sadly explode in the country. And look, God bless our public servants, men and women out there trying to keep their finger in the dike. Uh, and that's why we have a quarter million, 250,000 unsolved cases yeah. growing by 6,000 a year. But right. the stat that made my wife and I change direction, because we had a couple dozen discoveries on love stories and documentaries over the years. But when I met my wife, who was a, a crime victim and, and crusader, frankly, uh, we decided that we had to head in a different direction because one particular st stat scared us. And that is only 5% of departments have cold case team funding. Mm. It's, it's scary. And, and, and we have to put something in place. And I realized, and, and Donna did too, we both realized that the solution is to reach out to those at 55 who retire and okay, they can't climb the fences <laughs> and they've got a little arthritis like me, but you know what, yeah. as my dad used to say, this is what counts. Right. And, and that's what this is about, uh, using those brains. I've only met a third of my people. They all work based on, well, I was referred by so-and-so and so-and-so and that's how this is growing. And that's how mm. we're going to hopefully plant more teams around the country. Yeah. And you guys are working on big cases like uh, the D.B. Cooper case. We talked about yeah. you guys are working on Hoffa. We don't have to talk about that because that's sort of in, in route. But, you know, there's constantly new elements. Um, it's maybe a footlocker in an attic. It's maybe someone like, hey, someone's finally going to maybe listen to me. I mean, I know this has happened for you guys on the uh, Zodiac case. It, for whatever reason. And, and money is part of it, but also uh, 
we've seen too many of these stories like on 2020 where a DA or a police officer or a bunch of them fixate on one, one answer and they right. stop to consider other things. And I mean, how many innocent people have we put in jail because of this? And I'm not saying I'm above that. I'm probably would do the same thing. Like when you know in your heart that you're right and you pursue it, you lose the ability to say, hang on, this could be an alternate thing as a, a guy named Tim Ennis that was tried for the same crime three times. And, mm -hmm. uh, not wow. his DNA is under the victim's fingers, so, fingernails, right? And, wow. and he's right now in jail because of military things, but he, uh, there's no budget to test the DNA that might exonerate him. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and look, we, we, all these team members are volunteering. Right. You know, when there's a doc, they get a salary, their day salary. But the bottom line is they're out there all the time looking and working and God bless them because there's nobody else that can do it. Mm. And yeah, the budget is, look, my wife and I've been funding this 10 for 10 years. This is why we went to .org. And our goal is, is to get the communities, the law enforcement, the uh, government, the, uh, you know, entrepreneurs in, in different parts of the country. If you want the door knocks to, to come back again on that one year anniversary, if you want them to pick up the phones, these are the teams that are going to be able to do that. Police department is racing crime to crime. So if you believe in that, that's what you, that's why they need to see, uh, you know, the casebreakers.org. They should go to the website and look at what we're doing and look how they could be involved. We've had probably 50 cops come to us saying, I'm ready. And so as soon as we get our big deal coming on Zodiac, we're negotiating yeah. with two networks right now. Uh, we expect to sign with one of them next week. And they're already saying to us, be ready because we want to do a series. Well, this is the thing too. A lot of people have been critical of you guys' work and like saying you came out too soon or you did that or, or you just provided circumstantial evidence. But part of this is to fund what you guys do to continue to do it. There must be a profit motive. You don't just get to dig into your own pocket. And then you have to like, you have these incredible stories, DB Cooper, the Zodiac killer, it is okay to create revenue so you can continue to do this. We, we struggle with this like you're selling out in some way. Well, you should you should make money for this incredible work. We don't have a budget for it um, pro, you know, in the government. But here's how you fund this kind of work yeah. privately is by being sticky and being interesting and also putting to rest things like Donna Lass's family's grief you know, yeah. as you guys try to close the chapter on this, it's it's important for us to not lose sight of like what it means for you guys to actually do this. Well, yeah, and and I would tell you that we decided when we put this team together, we're not in it for fame and fortune. We are right. in it to help the families. And our frustration uh, when we did go public, we don't go public. We've been working. Everybody I've noticed on Reddit has said hey, we've never heard of these guys. Well, thank you very much. We've been working for 10 years that way. Easy working, yeah. We went public for one reason. We had uh, a department, Riverside PD, uh, that would not share the hairs found in the hand of the victim. They, God bless them, saved it. The coroner saved it in 1966, this murder in Riverside, and put them in a container and in the fridge. The FBI has used those hairs to clear three guys. Pardon me. That's the dog. That's all right. Celebrating, celebrating clearing uh, criminals. Yeah, Both case good. dog. Um, so uh, the bottom line is, is that we have to, we had to go public because they would not share the hairs, the last evidence in the Zodiac case. Uh, and we did. And uh, that's why we went public to get it out for the families. And the police department, look, I'm not going to knock the police departments. They have a lot to do. It's Riverside. It's just not that big of a place. And mm -hmm. when you have this case that's 60 years old in this case or damn near, you know, how do you justify taking somebody off on another wild goose chase? Like, yeah, well, we got our guy. We, we right. know who it is. We're working on that. It's hard to compel somebody. And you guys have tried. I mean, the uh, you sent me, I don't know if it's public or not, but you sent me the email record you know, email mm -hmm. after email, trying to go through, working through different agencies, different levels of the government. 
this is not something you want this to be simple where you just call the sheriff or the uh, the top cop in, in Riverside and you say, hey, uh, can we get access to those areas? And they go, yeah, sure. I'll send Richie right on over with them. <laughs> but that's just not that's just not how it works. You have to put something forward. And that means getting some media pressure and coming on a show like this. So we can go, hey, let's go Riverside or, or getting yeah. a day to run on this. Like I'm going to close cases with DNA. You know, yeah. like the, um, the murder at Stanford with that student who was murdered that maybe tied to Son of Sam. That's a crazy whole thing. But right. without a doubt, DNA changed that outcome on another 50, 40 year old case. For sure. Exactly. These things are moving because of that. Exactly. And and and, you know, the, I have one cop on our team. Bob told me that, you know, the bigger the department, the more the politics, you know, there's all these different uh, it, just like in any corporation, yeah. there's a hierarchy and and the egos you have to deal with. But I, we also want, as Jen pointed out, uh, we want them to understand the technology wasn't around back then. They have should have no guilt to work with labs that we're talking to, forensic right. experts. This is for them. Um, and some get them, they get it, some don't, but there is no alternative, folks. There's not enough tax dollars in the world for more cops, let alone defunding cops. Right. This is it. And, and I'm not comfortable, and I'm sure you aren't either. You think about we grew up, if there was a crime on your street, it was unusual yeah. in most of our neighborhoods. Now, if there's not a, if, if there isn't a crime, we're surprised. I mean, it's, it's a sad situation. This is the only way to do it and multiply the teams, the volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of old cops with, with wanting to. Oh, yeah. them, you know? <laughs> the other thing that happens when you go public, even if it is too early for someone's taste, is that someone who's like, there's a chance I, I've been holding the secret, you know, and now I yeah. can give it to you because someone's going to listen. Because look, when you look at something like the Kennedy assassination, there are <laughs> tens of thousands of leads. Even right. then, you can't chase them all down. I know they say they do, but you can't. You're not going to chase it down with the same kind of mental clarity as someone else who's like, this is the one thing I'm going to do is chase these things down. So uh, has anything broken since uh, Eric broke the news on, on uh, the Break It Down show a few weeks ago uh, about the Zodiac case? Anything new? Oh, gosh. We... Uh... We got a lucky break a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I'm not sure what detail Eric gave, but uh, we got tipped that two years before the Zodiac died, he decided to hand out all his weapons mm. and his gun parts and, and literally over a thousand shells, uh, both uh, the shells themselves and the full bullets, to his favorite uh, friends in town. And... <laughs> This was done two years ago. Well, one of them gave us the tip. And Donna and I decided that I needed to get up there ASAP, a good seven hour drive into the High Sierra and yeah. befriend these people. And we now have the evidence of the shells, uh, particularly uh, nine millimeter and 22s, because that's his cho most choice weapons. Uh, they're now at three different labs uh, in Maryland, uh, in uh, the uh, Salt Lake City area and California. And they're all being analyzed for forensics. And obviously, uh, they're looking at the shells too. Very exciting. And there'll be some results pretty soon. What do you think we might find from that? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot guessing, mm -hmm. but what do you think we might get from these, this evidence? I truly feel that we're going to find, uh, well, number one, one of the labs, they specialize in pulling uh, DNA off of shell casings. Mm. That's a particular lab. Uh, we have another one involving uh, that does uh, MVAC, uh, which in essence is a liquid, a special liquid that's used to wash items. And they can wash, I understand we heard a little broadcast from this, this uh, expert she was describing how they can even find something on rocks now. I mean, it's wow. just incredible what's coming out with the new DNA. So I, we have those hairs in the hands of Riverside. Yeah, They were done by the FBI. The FBI is going to get a call from our team and our production company with right. pressure to say, you guys did the lab work on those hairs. We'd like to compare it to our man. And right. we, of course, have lots of things with his hands all over him. 
when you guys get that call and they're like, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll compare it against post. Uh, how nervous are you that this might go the wrong way? Cause I mean, we know, but do we know? I, I will be honest with you. Um, my wife and I have noses for this. Our noses are twitching, and that happened with Cooper. Uh, mm. I'll float back to Cooper quickly because sure. when we got wind that money was found on the shoreline, uh, we had one of the two drug runners that helped plant the money on the shoreline, uh, a seven-year crime partner of Mr. Rackstraw, D.B. Cooper. Uh, and when we heard that, and he was claiming to be Cooper, the drug runner, but then suddenly it came out they were seven year friends with, oh, a, parach a parachuting guy from Vietnam. I turned to my wife and I said, honey, we got him. All we now have to do is find the evidence to prove it. I will tell you in this situation, after interviewing and uh, in essence uh, securing the rights to uh, nine individuals who've lived through this horror up there, because the Zodiac, when he moved up, and I know we'll talk about it in a minute, when he moved, up into those mountains with the kids and train them in killing everything possible. Uh, it wasn't for food. It was, as he called it, the thrill of it. Right. And some of the stories that came out of that, you have an understanding. Why would all these people in town, with half of them not knowing each other, even though it's a 300-person town, they right. have on different sides of town, like a petticoat, I mean, like a, uh, you know, a, a gossip city. There are some people that gossip here and there. They don't know each other, yep. and they all have the same horror about this man. That doesn't happen by accident. And that's when I realized all we need is the evidence. I also want to bring up the fact, and I want to get into the uh, the small town and, and the rugged nature of the high Sierra, because a lot of folks have questions. And, and listen, I, I don't mind the questions. I don't mind the, uh, the rigor that you guys are going to have to go through to convince people. But let's uh, also understand that there's an entire industry on TV uh, yeah. for not being discovered. Right. There's an entire industry on the Zodiac Killer you know, everybody's got their guy. Arthur Wee Allen is not the guy. It is just, just as, yeah. he has these fatal flaws, but you cannot convince someone if Arthur Wee Allen is their guy. And this goes back to that police thing. Once you right. lock on in your guy, can you let it go? So people refuse to have this be solved because they've got a vested interest, whether it's financial or emotional or, or mental. Um, these things, these things matter. And again, when you go public, you start to apply pressure on these, on these standards of, of uh, who DB Cooper is or isn't or everything. It, it causes, it causes things to change. Absolutely. And, and I will tell you that one thing that shuts people down, uh, many people down is we're volunteers. This is not about <laughs> money. We're out there working as Jen has talked about. What's the motive? You know, glory? No, it's not glory. It's for the families. Right. And secondly, yeah, look, I've dealt with all of them. I, I'm dealing with the Cooperites, the Zodiacers, and the Hophodites. And right. they're all they're all uh, going online saying, you know, that's so weak. That's that. Well, we're not revealing all our evidence. It has to be held for a documentary so we can make our money back. Yeah. And, and that's it. And it's a nonprofit. So what's the big deal here? Yeah. I, I understand, look, they've invested their lives, many of these people, for the last 30, 40 years. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know, we want everybody to work together. We yeah. cannot burn our bridges in law enforcement. And we cannot yeah. burn our bridges with sources. And so that that's the key thing. Do these people that have their little fiefdoms and their issues and wanting to say, it's my guy, your guy, are they really talking to the sources? And the answer is no, right. we are. Yeah. When you look at, and, and folks don't know this, they don't understand. I do because I know the man and I also know the work that goes into doing these things. When someone like Eric Kleinsmith says, I've done the analysis and I'm confident that this is the guy, that is not somebody saying, I read a book and I've, I've looked at the evidence. <laughs> this is a totally different grade of right. Intelligence and analytics. For those that don't know, Eric and his team found the 9-11 attackers before 9-11. And because of the nature of law at the time and, and the distance they were from someone who could, you know, we didn't get to put our finger on them ahead of time. 
Eric is excellent at what he does. And he is brilliant. And people hire him because he's brilliant. And you guys get to use his skills in the case breakers. You know, when you show Rackstraw the uh, the analysis, and he's like, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't say no. He like, starts to validate things. That's because Eric is really good. And Eric is just one of a team of people he have that are all just fantastic investigators. So I, if nobody else tells you, thank for doing that. And and let's not lose sight, you know, just for the audience, of just the, the amount of talent and expertise that that Tom has at his fingertips with these people. These people need to go up online and look at them. Just look uh, look at the team. Uh, yeah. it, it literally has said, meet the team. And they get to know this. Let me tell you, when these guys get together and argue, yeah, this is not one opinion. We have arguments and dis, you know discourse and, and, and then it comes back together. Sometimes it doesn't come back together, but we all have to agree which direction to go. And you know, that's the reason we feel so strongly on what we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was my FBI guys after they looked the scar on on the Zodiac on his forehead. And then we found the articles that realized in 59 he had brain surgery and scars. And the scar at 23 years old is the picture we have. Uh, the FBI guys said, I'm sorry, that's irrefutable. Yeah. And, and they don't say that lightly. <laughs> you can't get very many good things out of the FBI. They're very, very, oh, that's, I hate the term. They always just say, well, that's interesting. Come on, give me another verb. <laughs> give me another <laughs> description. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, you've got someone who's likely got a traumatic brain injury. Uh, they've got scars. Their scars identified in some of the sketches. But again, I can understand why someone would say, okay, there's scars on his forehead. I mean, maybe that fits these sketches. And you know, look, sketches, handwriting samples, voice ID. This stuff is at best questionable. It's a, oh, a absolutely. puzzle. So absolutely. when you say scars, why do we, why should we care about that? I would tell you it's, it's a piece of the puzzle. Okay. And, and when I say they call it irrefutable, they are talking about one thing, the scar. Mm -hmm. They are not buying it yet either. And they have to see the evidence as it comes out. And I will tell you the most interesting one was Riverside again. Mm. And uh, we found a, a half dozen interesting pieces of evidence at that scene that imply the Zodiac is involved. Right. And and if you want me to go into that now or we can do it methodically, it's up to you, Pete. Well, I want to go back to the rugged nature of the high Sierra oh, yes. what he's doing and his inculcation of these people. I mean, this is a guy that wanted to collect people, whether it was slaves for the afterlife <laughs> uh, but I, or people yeah. who would torture and kill animals for him. I mean, this mm -hmm. is this is he's doing it by proxy, which for me, that makes a lot of sense for the kind of guy he was, because he wants to create something evil and, and he's not going to do it himself. He's going to have others do it. And what proud parent wouldn't love watching their kid play baseball? And you're like, I can play baseball, but man, it's so much fun to watch my kid do it. Yeah. I, I would tell you that um, when he stopped killing and, and this comes from multiple sources. Okay. And former law enforcement, too. Um, when he left the Air Force in 63, he went to a union painting school, met a partner. They created a painting company. Then he met a woman with a child, a single mom, a uh, third grade education mother, uh, and an infant. And he adopts them and marries her and moves up to a small town in the High Sierra. Now, what's intriguing about that is this was a cover. The family was a cover. And how do we know that? Uh, the neighbors of the wife, and the wife is now in assisted living, and but she comes and goes. And some of her neighbors asked her and said how he, treat, he treated you. This is after he passed away. Uh, she said she never slept with him, consummated mm. the marriage never was in the same room with him. There is not one photo of them holding hands, arm wow. around her, none. And she said, you never even kissed him? And the, the, the widow said, no, we never did. It was a cover. When He never went to funerals. He never went to weddings. When they went to the market, he stayed in the car and made her get it all. I mean, this is his ultimate cover. That's how sophisticated he was. And then he adopted these kids. Now, that happened because when uh, there were a bunch of wayward kids up there in the 70s, I can relate to that age group, <laughs> uh, 
that were hanging around and he became a second father and he started fires. He had a, a fireplace or a, a barbecue out in the woods. He would uh, bring pot and he'd bring uh, liquor. He'd get these kids in their late teens and early 20s. Uh, he was indoctrinating. Yeah. And he was teaching them how to turn pipe bombs into bombs that would blow up homes, uh, sugar into cops, cars, uh, gas tanks. Uh, when a cop moved into town, he ordered them to go throw rocks through the windows and chase them out of town. Uh, he had this posse, this criminal posse, uh, and it would float between three or four up to 10. We, we've mm -hmm. counted as many as 10 that would go up with him in the mountains. And even though he had a painting partner, his biggest complaint was that guy's just gone away again for a month with the kids in the mountains. He would go for a month at a time sometimes, mm. and they would shoot everything they could get their eyes on. He'd hand out weapons. And there was one, ca uh, two cases. One of the guys said, uh, is this for food? And he said, no, we do this for the thrill of it. But the, the case that really shook us when we heard it, on one such trip, he uh, asked one of the kids to climb out on a branch and hang a cachet with meat in it, mm -hmm. literally dangling from this. Uh, and then they went up in the mountains. And a week later, they come back. And what he also did on the tree trunk is he put salmon hooks into it. Mm. And so he unfolds a folding chair. And what's there but three bears bleeding slowly to death, caught on the hooks, and what does he do? He sits there for hours laughing and talking to them. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Zodiac. Right. And that's what he did. He taught them. There are photos of him with his uh, blood up to here inside the animals. He would he would get into it as one of them described it. This mm. is where and how he lived. And, it, you know, the irony is there are some of these guys that still love him. They knew him in a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah, he had this odd side, they'd say, but uh, they said he was a great father figure. I think yeah. some yeah. of them still have some mind control issues, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I guess like if the control doesn't set in for somebody, they can maybe work around the weirdness and, you know, see him as this as this father figure. The um, one of the things that people are, are struggling with is the remoteness of where the weapons cache is. Can you talk a little bit about that and help us understand? I know, because I know the High Sierra. Yeah, you can have things that you just cannot get to, especially, this is not a gentle day walk in a lot of places. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, this this is, uh, I did the John Muir Trail at 11 years old with 40 pounds on my backpack, and it took two weeks. Mm -hmm. And it almost, and these were World War II dads taking us up in the Sierra. It was no big deal to them, but to us, it was a challenge. I mean, you can go for days and not see anyone up there. Right. And there are trails, for example, part of the trails we went up and did some scouting on uh, were part of Yosemite, but the boundary changed. We didn't know that. Five years later, and what has happened to the trail? It's gone. gone. It was sheared right. off the mountain, and nobody cares. Nobody has touched it. This is wild territory, and he took advantage of that. And we've been told by one of the witnesses that he buried his murder guns up there. We know the exact lake. There's going to be a chopper trip up there in the next year after the ice goes away. Um, no, he took advantage of the isolation. He even had a particular spot, we call it the shrine, where there are a group of trees that literally are carved into them all the symbols and images of his letters. Mm. The ghost and, and the uh, Halloween card with the ghost he carved it into trees in this area up there. Yeah. And it, there's the boo written in the tree. Yeah. Now, again, who in hell would do that if they weren't the Zodiac? You and know, the, I'm going to go to a particular area and copy all those cards. They're up there. His codes yeah. are in the tree. It's amazing. I've got a lot of time in combat zones. My body's pretty beat up. My hips at some point are going to have to keep me replaced. I go camping in the uh, high Sierra every year. And a lot of my family goes up and they and okay. they go up to the higher lakes, you know, that kind of thing. And I physically can't do it now. My body yeah. just won't allow yeah. me to go up to my hips. If I drag my toe on a couple of rocks, I'm done. I just admit a lot of pain. And and so, you know, I just can't do it. So, again, when we're explaining this, 
It's the altitude. It's the rugged nature, rugged nature of these things. A helicopter, sure, that's a different scenario. And even then, the Sierra collects planes and helicopters all the time because yeah, of the way the, uh, the air flows up there. So this is this is a very hard and wild place. I, I wanted to make sure we covered that because people, I guess they think it's just like a gentle pasture. This is not, the high Sierra is not that. It's it's a You can absolutely walk your way down it and you can walk within 10 feet of something and never know it's there too because exactly. it is an open place and you may not see anybody for, for hours like you were saying. Let's Dang. talk. Day, yeah, days for sure, for sure. Let's talk about um, let's talk about Riverside because I think that's an interesting thing with the police department's reluctance to cooperate, the state's right. reluctance to cooperate, and then the uh, body of evidence. I mean, paint flex on the uh, on the watch that right, right. Let's well, talk about yeah, that. yeah. The um, this was in 1966, and we believe well, while the San Francisco agencies say there were five victims. Our team, after about a year and a half, have discovered that there's probably closer to 10. Okay. And it stretches from San Diego all the way to Lake Tahoe now of uh, the MO and, and uh, the work. We recognize it. The team recognizes it. And the shell casings, most of them are still around. So, But the one that was most interesting, to and we were going up the coast. We went from San Diego, which we're still involved with on investigation, uh, Oceanside, and now Riverside is where we ran into the roadblock. Mm. Uh, this was a college student outside a library uh, who uh, was found uh, in about 10 o'clock at night uh, and 41 stab wounds, uh, almost decapitated, according to the chief that wrote the note. Um, and what was interesting about the scene is several things. As you mentioned, uh, there was a watch that was broken, meaning the strap had come off, probably in the struggle, uh, and there were paint spots on it. Our suspect was a 40-year painter, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and we believe that's a connection. Our suspect was uh, retired Air Force in 1963, but he was having medical care at March Air Force Base, 15 minutes away from the murder scene. Yep. returning for visits. He had a bullet wound, an accidental accidental uh, bullet wound, and it pierced his lungs. So he was coming back for doctor checks. Uh, we have since learned from a source that there is DNA on that watch strap. Mm. That's one of the things we'd like to compare to. Um, but the hairs are the most interesting. They were brown hairs. Our suspect was brown haired at the time. Uh, and those hairs, four hairs, one of them had a blood clot on the end of it. And in the nails, as you mentioned earlier in another case, in the nails uh, were his skin samples. Mm -hmm. She put up a hell of a fight. Yeah. And thank God, as I said, for that coroner, saving those hairs, they are available. Um, yeah, there. Oh, and obviously the footprint. There is a low cut military boot footprint there being Air Force. Mm -hmm. And that footprint is size 10 and mm -hmm. that style size 10 that is spotted three years later at three Zodiac crime scenes, the same size, the same yep. style. And we have photos of him in the same shoes, size 10. So again, these things are adding up. Um, that's all I can say. It's just yeah, adding up. it's a lot yeah. of, of a piling. And again, people say it's circumstantial evidence. Just take out the word circumstantial. Let's just call this evidence. You have yeah. you have the right service because you have Wing Walker. She was in the Air Force. He's in the Air Force. He's uh, steeped in cryptography. He's trained in it, so he knows that. I mean, he's got a weapons wound because he handles weapons. All I mean, he's got all of these elements. He's a painter. He's in the area. There's paint. All of these things start to attach more more reality. He's a guy who's hey reportedly acts like a, a sociopath, psychopath with young kids and grooming and everything. I mean, at some point you're like, yeah, we have to take this serious. I'm not saying he is right now, but we have to take this seriously. We, he also has a black room or a, a dark room, pardon mm -hmm. me, a dark room where hundreds of hundreds of photos, he was a shutter bug yeah. and he took shots of himself in that shrine area under mm -hmm. the tree. Yeah. As he, he sets up the camera and, and the old click, 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 and he's ready for it. He even puts on the hood again. Oh, my God. He puts on the hood again. 
and does a silhouette shot as the sun goes down on the tree. Right. You see the flying, uh, the tree has been shredded. He took the bark off so he can draw on it. And there's the flying ghost, there's the boo. And then as the sun goes down, he is wearing in silhouette the hood. Now, again, who is going to do this other than the Zodiac? Right. This was his shrine. We yeah. have hundreds of photos of him involved in animals, of himself. And here's the best part. This is exclusive. We have video. We have an hour of the posse in the mountains. Wow. With him at lakes, uh, VHS quality. And they're gonna. that's going to be transferred. And that's one of the reasons we have two networks eyeing this program because we have the actual posse members with the zodiac in the mountains that is incredible i mean you can you have to infer based on the silhouette of the of the hood but again if these symbols are up there this is like a shrine either he's really into the zodiac or he's really into the zodiac and is the zodiac I mean, yeah <laughs> Yeah, These and, are and he has confessed, uh, Pete, he has confessed to six people. We have three of them in affidavit. Right. Yes, they were his jailmates, but they were under, you know, they're now court ordered affidavits. And right. he confessed everything at the end in the last year to these. And one of the posse members it was intriguing. Uh, one of the posse members, and he's one of the guys, he's an adopted son, uh, loved the man. It's torn him up to learn who he was. Mm. But as with family members that learn a father or a mother or a cousin is a killer, you love and hate him. And in this situation, uh, that's that's what occurred is is that it became uh, one of them on his last visit to the Zodiac with less than a month to live. He was out of the jail. The last two years he was put in jail because he pushed his his God bless her, 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 the wife down the stairs. And yeah. that was domestic uh, violence. And so he was put in jail. Uh, then he pretended as pe we learned being demented. So he wouldn't be charged. Mm -hmm. They put him into a locked facility at a assisted living for his last year. And this member, uh, the former uh, 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 posse member went to visit him and said, mm -hmm. are you the Zodiac? And he said, if I, if I was, would I be here? In other words, he said, I didn't admit it that I was Zodiac so that I could be here and have a nice, clean bed. Right. And that's when he realized he was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, Donna Lass, the, the postcard, look through the trees, all that stuff. You guys have found more than I know of anybody else finding. That. And again, we have to put the pieces together, but you guys are putting the pieces together because of your approach. So let's talk a little bit about what you guys have discovered with that. The man who's responsible for solving the anagrams and so forth is Dale Julin. Dale Julin came to us. He was a TV anchor uh, mm. in the West Coast, and then he, and he's just retired in Georgia. Uh, he was, as I said earlier, a Boy Scout on a bus uh, when the bus was being escorted by the police. So he knew the fear. Uh, and um, what, what he decided to do is to tackle every letter, 19 of them. And uh, he learned about anagrams. He learned about codes. He spent in between his anchor duties and his investigating, he would sit down and we have shots of him pushing letters and making words, uh, he learned how the Zodiac thinks, just like with D.B. Cooper. Mm. Uh, they had a code that was from Vietnam, where, and, and their group knew how to speak. He learned the, the speaking abilities of the Zodiac so that he could come in, up with the words. And uh, he t wound up taking uh, uh, a, how would you describe it? a trail he gave a trail to whoever could figure it out talking about right. narcissists again he said this is how this is the highway you go down and you turn left here and you go there and there it is and you'll find the tree with the hole in it now if you remember the halloween card there is a hole a split yep. he found that tree and built that card around the tree and at the base of the tree is an x where he said it would be um fascinating now, again, we think he moved the body, and I think the body was bones. Uh, he talked in his codes about 
uh, being bones with, with Dunnell Ass. And uh, as I said, I think it was moved to a spot in the High Sierra right at the shrine. We believe that's where we will find uh, Donna. Mm, mm, or whatever's left of her, if, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's a remarkable thing. So you guys are about to go into media blackout because these you're going to make a deal with one of these networks. What's the time frame on when we'll get a chance to actually talk to you again and, and see this, uh, <laughs> this series that you guys are going to put together? Well, it, it, we are going to have a buyer in the next week, we believe. Uh, it's that close. Right. And when that happens, uh, then all the details of this investigative, and this is the investigative chronicles we put together, uh, timelines and everything else, the FBI help us design these so that they're yeah. meticulous. Um, this becomes the property of the partner. So they can go right out the gate. They have all the addresses, the contacts, the locations. Everything's been set for them. That's how we do, and we're we're very unique at doing that. Uh, we're right. the only team that does that. Um, I'm thinking that once the deal is signed, uh, we're going to have a winter period where we can't do any digging, and that refers to Hoffa, and it also refers to the mountains here. Right. Um, so we're probably going to be going up into the hills in the summer. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot of interviews during the winter. Right. Uh, and again, this is all going to be to our director whoever that may be. Uh, and uh, we're going to ask for certain things that will make it easier for the victims up in that town. But no, we'll, we'll be shut down until, gosh, we'll probably be able to talk to you on broadcast day. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Yeah. Which is probably going to be uh, early 2023. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So a good full year of production. I'm um, glad we came in to see you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. I mean, this is why I, I, I jumped out the opportunity to do this because I believe in what you guys are doing. And, and even let's say you missed the mark. What's to say that that happened? It isn't. It isn't Gary Post. Um, the fact that you've brought this much attention and energy back into this case might knock something else loose that we do find out who this person is. I, I'm with you. I think it's Gary Post. Everything I've talked to you guys online and offline about. There's so much there that if it's not him. Who else could it be? I mean, I think we're we're actually I think we're past that point. I mean, I think it's him, but you know, it, it's good for skeptics to continue to ask the question. <laughs> what would I you will, say? I will, I will tell ahead. the skeptics that um, look, half the team members that came to us uh, pretty much say the same thing when they join. I won't do folklore. I won't do yeah. legends. I won't do anything but the facts. Right. And we've lost a few members that didn't hold to that standard. But um, when these guys say it's it, I don't argue with them. And it's not me first. It's usually the one, once they admit it, that saying, yeah, this is, this is, uh, we're on the right trail. I'm done worrying. And uh, that's how confident we are. I've asked, and Eric has said twice, it's the ciphers and Gary's name being the solution for the cipher. What do you think is the strongest piece of evidence you guys have gathered? Boy, there, there are so many things that I'm impressed by. I will tell you, I think it's the community. The okay. community and, and the community who gave up all these shells and gun parts. And um, we're going to be pulling DNA off that. And for comparison, hopefully, to the hares in Riverside or the profile of the hares that the FBI lab did. There's going to be right. a lot of pressure on the feds. Because as you know, right now they're digging in New Jersey with the FBI on hand. Right. right. And they've talked about getting involved in other cases. They're a little intimidated by us mm. because we didn't have the best relationship in D.B. Cooper. And uh, we're hoping the FBI comes back. We went to them. By the way, I went down to Los Angeles FBI headquarters, met with the, one of the agents in charge, showed him the Zodiac and showed him the Hatha situations, yeah. the raw materials. And he goes, you guys have solved it. Yeah. Let me, I'm going to call the crime division. Three times he called the crime division and FBI, and all three times said they wouldn't engage us, right. which is sad. And I'm hoping that changes. I hope so, too. You know, And, and the, a similar thing happens with the uh, Son of Sam and, and the possibility of there being a greater uh, thing, you know, 
to go far as far as the uh, the police union not wanting any action in this and and them applying political pressure on people to not cooperate if we've got the ability to solve these crimes you know and you guys have done all the expensive work let's uh let's at least eliminate Gary Post then if not go yeah it's him i mean i don't understand I don't understand why why it's so precious. Okay, I get it. Riverside's got a different guy. All right. Well, here's always this, you know, two inch stack of paperwork. You know, can we just run this and then and then do it? What uh, what other DNA evidence exists? You know, the Lake Herman uh, murders. There were shell casings left. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure that shell casings at Blue Rock. These um, uh, the the technology to pull DNA off of shell casings is brand new, and and this is a specialist that we're so excited to have her on board. And um, we have shell casings in most towns. Um, you know, there are, Francine is her name, uh, Bardell, Francine Bardell. Um, and she is phenomenal in inventing this uh, ability and it's unique. And that type of situation is gonna open eyes. We have shells in San Francisco, we have them in Vallejo, we have them in uh, San Diego. Uh, we're going to be approaching them with our <laughs> gorilla in the room, and that's going to be the network. So there'll be some pressure on these folks to compare. And now we can uh, use MVAC on clothes. They have kept a lot of the clothes on the victims. Mm -hmm. They've stored them. So there is a lot of hope here, a lot of hope. could even be uh, DNA on the Stein shirt. You know, that if you take the time to tear something apart. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the Stein, uh, that was compared to our Zodiac suspect because we gave it to San Francisco and Vallejo. Yeah. They are no longer sharing it with us because uh -huh. of Riverside. All the, the wagons circled and now they're not working with us. But they did compare. In fact, when he was arrested for the uh, uh, attack on his wife, uh that's when dale got the dna but the san francisco uh investigators said no thank you we're going to drive all the way up to tuolumne county jail and get our swab so they had the swab came back compared it but as you know and i know nobody was keeping uh evidence in secure places or refrigerated uh and again the only one we know of is riverside so sadly they could not get any complete match on anything there, including envelopes, including uh, stamps, nothing. The uh, the Kathleen Johns story where she's abducted and everything else, is that part of your guys' focus or is that is that a bridge too far to link that to the Zodiac? I know that there's belief from about it, but what are your thoughts? Well, I, I will just tell you what the evidence shows. And I haven't made a decision either way because she has passed on. Right. And, and there really is no one we can compare notes to. Uh, but the fact that, uh, that the Zodiac himself talked about it, uh, the, uh, and, and the FBI talked about it, uh, but there was no conclusion. And I, I fall in that area that, look, I can't, I can't imagine a mother with a baby would suddenly seek all this publicity and right. make it up. And then her car was burned mysteriously. Right. Uh, she didn't burn the car. So uh, I, I would say that it is a very interesting story, but I don't see where it can go from here. And then the other thing about is if that is a Zodiac victim, um, look at how different that MO is. Yeah. And so that opens up. You guys have 10, you know, Zodiac claims, I don't know what, like 50 plus or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Gray Smith has a number, I think above 80, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that have died and have been unsolved. And if you're willing to go abduct a lady on Highway 4, uh, you're creative and you can pretty much do whatever you want. I will mention that something we can ask of your listeners and mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that is this. We have noticed, as we said, it's not five. We think it's closer to 10. Right. There, There is a murder every year from 62 to 70, except two years. And that's um, uh, 67 and 65. This, this guy is so meticulous. I have no doubt he killed somebody every year. 
And I ask the listeners and viewers to, uh, th if you know someone that has the MO uh, of the Zodiac victim uh, or the Zodiac suspect, please let us know in those two years, because we think we're going to find, uh, once we do our study in the documentary, we're going to look at 65 and 67 and see if he where what he was doing at the time. He was out of the military. Right. So we'd like to know if there are any murders that match. Yeah. And the other thing is, is in California, at least, we have a lot of beach and a lot of it's very secluded. Oh, yeah. And if you get a hankering for killing somebody and people would, people still do, they sleep overnight at the beach. It's not hard to right. find a victim that is no one's ever going to hear. No, And you can sneak right up on them, you know, especially if yeah. like lovers or whatever. And that, that, I don't know how many cases there are of someone being bludgeoned by a random person you know, if that's not a Zodiac possible, I don't know what is. Well, Pete, I will tell you that uh, some great old cops told me that, you know, during the 60s and 70s, there everybody was experimenting and there were a lot of uh, people that lost it and started stabbing people. And it was just up and down the coasts yeah, uh, yeah. in California. So defining which one Zodiac versus uh, somebody getting high and start stabbing a stranger it, there there are so many of those cases so many, that's yeah. why we're looking for a family that says no he did not get high no right. he was a good guy you know and yeah let's yeah. find those victims yeah it's uh it's crazy so okay uh you're working on hoffa you're continuing to ensnare db cooper rackstraw i mean you guys have your guy but you guys continue to get information on that is there anything else breaking on any of these that you want to discuss before we uh have to send you on your way the interesting story that came to us was a taxi cab driver in stockton who yeah. was uh picking up a stranger it turned out to be a vietnam vet named robert w rackstraw rdb cooper suspect and he adamantly called us this taxi cab driver. He's almost 80, but sharp as a whip. And he called us and said, I know after watching that first documentary on history, this is him. And he explained to us the minute he got in the cab and he had a big gunny sack and a briefcase, rack straw, as he claimed, he said that uh, the minute they found out they were veterans, they opened up. And he explained, hey, I'd like to show you something. And he opens up the briefcase and shows him uh, stolen dynamite that he was convicted on three years later from uh, Stockton. He broke in and took some dynamite and hid it there. Well, he tried to ship it to a Vietnam partner in Texas. It He wrote sloppily. It came back. That's how they caught him. He served two years for the dynamite. But he talked to this man and he said, my job is to blow things up. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's where I'm heading. <laughs> He tells an amazing story out of Stockton. Yeah. That that whole thing, and I guess that kind of teases uh, something you're going to do with Eric Hunley later on, but um, Rackstraw being a CIA operative, and look, right. I'm a spy, right? If you find bad guys that are willing to work for you, you need bad things done. A guy like Rackstraw is really handy, uh, which now protects him from being arrested by the FBI because he's in a special program. You know, there's, there's things that are classified at top secret SCI, which means that you have to have a special access to that specific program. Exactly. Otherwise you're just told like, Hey, go away. This is none of your business. We're not going to tell you why it's just none of your business. I mean, that's how the class of the secret top secret world works is everything's compartmentalized so that not everybody knows about it. Is there uh, is there, I mean, I I understand that. I understand how that works operationally, but is it a far jump to think that Rackstraw was protected by the CIA and therefore the FBI um, was complicit, complied to work with them? I will tell you that we've had a couple commanders during Iran-Contra that came to us now in their 80s. After they saw our evidence on Rackstraw and the coding, mm -hmm. they said, yeah, uh, the Air Force was running Iran-Contra's air, air and bringing in people in and out and dropping things to the Contras. Yeah. Uh, these guys were in charge of that Air Force job of running the skies down there. And they said, yeah, we knew he was Cooper. He worked for us and uh, we needed him. We needed, we had bigger fish to fry. <laughs> yeah, and and what was really intriguing is, is that, uh, look, we don't question our heroes in the shadows that are keeping us safe, but I question a guy with uh, 32 criminal titles, 22 identities, 
and uh, families and jobs in five countries. Yeah, uh, that's not a representation of, in my view, of the CIA. Right. And they looked the other way. He wound up killing his own father, according to his own partners. Yeah. Um, and got away with it. Yeah. Well, listen, it's great to have you on. It's great to get, dive into all this stuff. Hopefully we've given some of the uh, the critics the, uh, some answers to some of the questions. Anything else in closing before I wrap this up? Yeah. Yeah. Just quickly, I want, I want to remind the audience, if they want to get involved in this, we need you. We want to expand these teams. So please go to thecasebreakers.org. Go down at the bottom if you want to read uh, about D.B. Cooper. Go down to the bottom to read about the Zodiac. Uh, there is a summary for Hoffa. It's fascinating stuff. And again, uh, it, it, it's eye opening. And I think they'll have an understanding of what the evidence is. I do also want to remind them that there are 25 Cooper books, but this is the only one put together by FBI agents and our team. And it has not one, but three national awards for true crime. Pete, the, the sad part of this book is the FBI tried to shut it down after the first documentary in 2016. They they literally said uh, there's nothing new with Colbert. This is why it's won its awards. Yeah, and we hope they look at it. How about exactly. a hunk of the parachute? Come on. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right, man. Listen, stand by one second. Let me shut this thing down. Hey, thanks for watching the show. I really appreciate it. Right here, you can subscribe. Please do that. It makes the show grow. Hit that notification bell so you know which incredible guest is coming up next. Down below is the PayPal link. You can put a small subscription in. That is an enormous help. All that money goes right back into the show. And then right up over here are the next episodes you should listen to, curated by yours truly. Thank you 